Here we are. Four podcasts on one show. Tony, this whole thing started. I think I called you one day in my backyard and was like, you know what we need to do? We need to do a festival with a bunch of podcasts yeah. in this like paranormal And space. I was... Is he there? We didn't know what to <laughs> this call. This is such a great and start. Like, <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> How did it all start? One day, I thought, we should have a festival. <laughs> and then this <laughs> happened. <laughs> you froze That's it. We are. All right. So should we do a take two on that one? Yeah, because you froze up, Nate. Yeah, it was froze. Right. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it was a long pause. It was a little awkward <laughs> for a second. And Tony jumped in. Like, I did. I did say we should do a festival. Okay. Let me try again. All right. Thank Three, God. two, one, yeah. go. All right. So here we are. We got four podcasts on this episode and uh, we're talking about something cool. It started in my backyard. I called Tony and I said, you know what, Tony? I played a lot of music festivals in, in back in the day and there was a ton of bands. Like, what if we did something with a bunch of paranormal podcasts and we had some fun name for it? And then a couple of days later, I was like, what about Squatchella? And Squatchella is happening. I was born. Is that yeah. how it happened, Tony, or am I have fuzzy memories here? I think you, I think you pitched Squatchella on the phone to me, and okay. I was like, "Sounds good." Uh, no, I, I, you were pitching it to me on the phone. I was in my driveway. I yelled at my wife and said, "Hey, I'm not overbooked, right?" And she's like, "You're absolutely overbooked." I said, it "Sounds good. Let's do it." So, <laughs> uh, and that's how how it started. Yeah, it's awesome. The music festivals are fun when when you know back in the band days, you know, you get as many people on one show as possible, and it was an all day event. You sweated, you you spent like eighteen dollars on a bottle of water, but you had a lot of fun. But what about all these these podcasts that talk about the big guy Sasquatch, you know, and all the weird paranormal stuff out there? And so we have four podcasts at least on Squatchella so far. Ooh. We don't know what the special guests are. Uh, they're going. We've been telling everyone but, it's uh, Joe Rogan, so. <laughs> I was under the impression that we were special guests. This is no news to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess uh, introduce your podcast and uh, tell us your weirdest story. We'll do this camp style, you know, when you're like go to camp and you have to introduce your name and like your favorite yogurt or something, you know? Yeah. Mm. Should, should I go first? Since yes, go Tony. Tony. Go Tony. Okay. Go. Uh, name's Tony Merkel, host of the Confessionals podcast. And uh, started the show seven years ago and focusing on people's experiences with the strange and unusual. Uh, so we just sit down, had that conversation. When I first started the show, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do anything. And I thought I was going to have to be like a journalist. So I was trying to sit down and do pre-written questions and like, you know, draw out all the information. And uh, as soon as I threw it out the window, I just sat down and started having conversations with people. And the show, I think, got dramatically better. So uh, that's what we do. We sit down, talk to people about their experiences and uh, their thoughts on all the strange stuff. And as the years have gone on, this show has gotten crazier because I have come to understand that reality is way, way, way stranger than I've ever imagined. And, um, you know, as far as crazy stories goes for the show, that's like, ask me which kid is my favorite, you know, because we like... We have a lot. Uh, so I just, when you brought that up, Nate, as to as a talking point, I went to my YouTube channel and I just looked up as like my pop, most popular shows. And the second most popular one is one of my uh, ones that I jumped to right away. I called it Joshua Tree Portal Cult. And I, I can't even like go into the entire story. It was almost a four hour podcast. Uh, but essentially this guy, he moved from Atlanta to LA. He's in the film industry, uh, works for Netflix shows. And he was shortly after he was in LA, him and his roommate went to a bar one night, got drinks. And when his roommate uh, got up and went to the bathroom, this other guy came over, sat down with him and just started talking, became friends. And his roommate comes back, they're all talking and the bar's starting to shut down. And the guy's like, hey, I know this other place that's open. You guys want to come and hang out? And they're like, yeah, sure. So they go to this other location. And as they're walking up to it, there was like all these like goth looking people walking in. And his roommate just kind of got weirded out. He's like, I don't think I want to go in there. And uh, the guy that was on the show with me, uh, his name's James. And he he's just like, well, I'll see you back at the apartment. You know, this, this dude is going to give me a ride back home after we're done hanging out. So he goes in and that experience there was strange. Like a lot of weird people and weird things happening around him. But he didn't really think much of it because James is the kind of person he doesn't want to prejudge anything. He just kind of really just wants to live life and just have the experience and see what happens. You know, uh, they're in the car heading back to his apartment 
And this guy, I forget what we called him on the show. Let's call him Mark here. Um, this guy gets a text message from his friend saying that there is a party in Joshua Tree. And he's like, do you want to go to this party in Joshua Tree? At this time, it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. And James is like, nah, man, I kind of just want to go home. I'm tired. Uh, long story short, he talks him into going out to Joshua Tree. This is a Friday night, I believe. They arrive in Joshua Tree, let's say five, six o'clock in the morning, and it's an entire weekend thing. So they spend the entire day there. Uh, when he gets there, shortly after he gets there, some guy comes over to him, puts a bracelet on him that says VIP. And not everybody had VIP. Only James and like one or two other people had a bracelet that said VIP on it. And, uh, you know, he's just hanging out, chilling for the day. They're, they're having drinks and just talking. And um, throughout the day, uh, you, you get familiar with the, the amount of people that are there and the surroundings. There's this one girl there who seemed like as the day went on, she got more and more anxious with anxiety. Uh, and she was saying things like, I can't be here tonight. I can't, I can't do that again. I can't be whatever happened last night. And he's like, what are you talking about? She was very vague. She wouldn't tell him. And, um, so he's going through the day and he has to go to the bathroom. Now I called the show Joshua tree portal cult. There was a very strong urge in me to call it the porta potty portal because <laughs> it all changed when he went into the porta potty. Uh, but he goes into this porta potty and he just takes a, a leak. It's not very long. He comes back out. And when he walks out, he said there was a noticeable difference in the surroundings. He said, uh, there was he was still there, but there was a lot more people there than there were just two minutes ago. And again, James is a real laid back kind of guy. He's like, oh, what, whatever, you know. And he just kind of goes throughout his day. So the uh, throughout the day, there was uh, I guess everybody was really excited about the two DJs that were showing up. There's these two like I guess twin DJs or something. And uh, they when the DJs showed up, everybody got real excited. They start setting up for the party at night. And, um, at, at some point through that process, there's this other guy who told James that, uh, Hey man, listen, I know you don't got a whole lot. You know, you just came here randomly. This is your bed. You know, you can sleep on it. it it's for you this weekend. Take it. And he's like, Oh, that's great, man. Thanks. You know? So he, he has his place to sleep that night after the party. He's excited. And the party starts, they go into this tent that they set up and the DJs are going. And when he goes in, he starts seeing uh, people physically transform uh, demonic entities uh, that he, I don't think he was identifying as that in the moment, uh, walking around him, uh, what you could only really call as vampires. Uh, I think he even said people with uh, yellow eyes or something like that. There's a lot of weird things. And he, he's like, I don't know what the heck's going on here. He, he, he's like, this is tripping me out. Um, he goes outside and... I'm skipping a lot of information here, uh, a lot. But he goes outside where the guy who brought him is uh, is out there with another guy, and he's like, "Hey, you know, is this is this place like tripping you guys out?" And they're like, "Hey, man, you need to just rest, relax, and stuff." And they kind of walk him over to this one truck that has like this bunk in it, and it wasn't. I don't think it was his bunk that they gave him initially. Actually, it might have been. Either way, they said, "Why don't you just go in there and and rest?" And so. He starts to crawl in and he realizes if they close the door behind him, it locks from the outside. And he felt real uncomfortable with that. So he kind of like hops out and he's like, no, nah, I'm good. Because they, they started walking away and he walks over and they're like, aren't you going to take a nap? And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to, I'm just going to, um, I'm, I'm going to ride it out. And they kind of whisper to each other in each other's ears and they're just like, all right. And they just go back into the, um, into the tent. And at this point, uh, he goes over to the guy who said to him about the bunk and everything. He starts talking to him and the guy's being real rude to him. Like he doesn't want to talk to him anymore. And, uh, at some point around this time, this is where it gets trippy. Uh, the tent shoots straight up into the air and a green portal opens up underneath it and people are flying up in the air and he's, he's freaking out. He runs away he, he runs into a group of people that had um, were dressed in black cloaks doing some kind of seance. And one of the people uh, started laughing at him saying, you have no idea what's about to happen to you. And he just he starts running the opposite direction. And a lot of other things started happening to him uh, that that seemed to present this idea that at some point while he was during the day there, 
he went through some kind of dimensional shift. And we've experienced this on the show several times. And uh, it's funny because like when I introduce my show to people nowadays, I'm like, where do I even start this rabbit hole with you? Right. Um, but I've experienced several times with people on the show where it seems like th- not on purpose, but accidentally they go through dimensional shifts and they don't even realize it. Like they, everything seems like normal around it, but there's little small things that are off that looking back on it, it's like they were on some kind of like dimensional bridge between realms almost. And I think that's what kind of happened with him because at some point he's trying to run away from this party through the desert. And, uh, he's, it it was like, there's forces that like he was pushing through trying to get out of this. And, um, he actually winds up going through the desert. A lot of trippy things happen to him there. The ground opening up around him. He finally makes his way to a hospital and is sitting in a waiting room asking for, for them. He, he basically asked them to, uh, for a charger to charge his phone and, um, he's charging his phone. And, oh, by the way, during this whole thing, his phone stopped working. It, it, he couldn't call 911. He couldn't call for help. It, it like was down. Um, it didn't start operating again until he was at the hospital. Uh, but so he, he goes through this whole, whole ordeal and he has a voicemail on his phone and it's from the guy who brought him there. And the guy's just like, Hey man, you kind of just disappeared on us. We don't know what happened to you. you, you are you good? We don't know where you're at. And, um, the voicemail should have ended there but the guy forgot to hang up the phone. And when he puts the phone down, he hears this conversation between the two guys saying, uh, do you think he knows what happened? Do you think he remembers what happened? And all this other stuff, like basically is seeming like they're trying to deceive him. And um, that was, it, it may not, I, I don't know if that sounds trippy to people, but it is honestly one of the most trippy experiences we've had on the show because of all the things that have been able to be validated through this story, um, after I released it, I had never heard of crazy bonker things happening in Joshua Tree. After I released it, I had several people contact me with similar stories. Uh, one guy actually came on the show. Uh, his name was James as well, and he was in the military. And uh, he actually had an experience at this very location uh, years before. And um, then there's another guy who contacted me who lost his mother and decided to go hiking in Joshua Tree. Uh, to just blow off steam, he goes missing for four days, and it, the, the news covered it that you know man goes missing in Joshua Tree, all that stuff. He sent me the video clips of it, and they searched this area, and he wasn't there. And then all of a sudden, they they're searching four days later, and he's there, and they're asking, they're like, where where did you go? Like we we don't know what happened. And he's like, I was here, and they're like, you weren't here when we came through, and he's like, and what he said to me in the email, I don't know if he told them this, but he said. I was there, but I wasn't totally there. I was also somewhere else. Like it was like a mirror world. And um, he said that there was black cloaked entities that would walk up to him and talk to him in a different language while he was there for four days. And so like something tri- trippy happens in Joshua Tree. Uh, I, I got plenty of stories that have happened in the Joshua Tree area since I released this show. But uh, yeah, Joshua Tree Portal Cult episode 512 is probably... One of my favorite trippy episodes we've done. Yeah, it gets wild. And it reminds me of music festivals. Every time you went into a warp tour porta potty, you came out, mm. things were weird too. <laughs> Come out and see a lot of vampires. That's why you <laughs> don't use porta potties. Yeah. I've right. always said that. Yeah. True. It, made, it, made me, it made me think of like that, those, the, those Asian game shows where they put, someone walks into a porta potty and then they roll up like a like a shipping container that has like a bunch of dudes in there like at a conference like in a conference meeting and then they yeah. someone walks out and they're like in in a, in a meeting like somewhere else and they're like wait they cl- they go back in the porta potty yeah exactly dude that's i remember those porta potties were like sought after band band dudes would fight to get into them in the morning before they got soiled by the rest of the rest of the crew out there and uh yeah because it, before it entered the mirror realm because after so many times people use it it just be, creates its own dimension i think from the fumes <laughs> the chemicals T- tony what's, what's interesting about that is what it made me think at the end what you were talking about with the guy in joshua tree it, it sounds like a little bit like some of the things that david politis covers on missing four and one yeah like you have people that just disappear and then all of the areas are covered and searched and then they kind of show up back in that area mm-hmm. um dude i wonder you know we, we've kind of hypothesized a few times in the show about there being UFO involvement and Politis actually has that film 
uh, missing four one one the UFO connection, but the the dimensional idea is really fascinating that like they could sort of slip into some other other place. We've talked about Bigfoot as well in that in that case where there's a little kid that travels like I forget how many miles, eight miles over these two mountain ranges and ends up you know, instead of a bear took him right. So you have these, but that that's a fascinating idea that sort of you slip out of this dimension into somewhere else. And then you kind of come back and you come back in the same well, place. Everyone's looked for you. I mean, like you, you talk about people's experiences with certain things and it, let's just keep it out in nature and the missing 401 stuff. Like people will talk about how the quiet, the, the, the woods just go deaf. It's just completely quiet. And, you know, a lot of times people talk about, Oh, lots of predators are in the area and that's why everything goes quiet. And I just had this conversation with Wes last night from Sasquatch Chronicles. And, um, he and I were talking about this very thing. And he said to me that, you know, he's been hunting. I've never been hunting my in my life, but um, he's been hunting. And That's he changing chance. now. You're ten- Tennessee Tony now. So t- everything's changing. Yeah, well, I, I, got two pi- I got two pigs in my backyard and be processing soon. So, you know, is that hunting? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've kind of cornered them for a year. Uh, <laughs> long term. Um, if you but, do it uh, blindfolded, it's hunting. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I'll just make sure everybody clears back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like what he talked about the, the environment shift in, in the quiet down and how a lot of times people talk about, you know, the predator idea and, you know, it, maybe, and this is, I think me talking more than anybody else, but maybe it's not necessarily that a, a predator is in the area and that's why everything gets quiet. Maybe you're you're experiencing some type of dimensional shift. A lot of times people have these experiences when everything gets quiet. Um, it's unnaturally quiet. And if it's just a predator in the area, like like that doesn't like the way people describe it at least, it I don't think that happens when a bear's in the area, when a cougar's in the area, like it's like a pin drop. Um and, and maybe it does, but I think that there's a strong possibility that, you know, with, along the lines of dimensional shifts and stuff, maybe that's what people are experiencing with the, the missing 401 stuff. Um, and David Politis talks about this very thing and how if you have this experience where everything gets quiet and the environment changes around you to stop walking and if you're with somebody to sit your butt down on the ground with your back against each other and wait it out. Don't move, let it pass. Mm. And so to me, that says that there could be some kind of dimensional shift happening uh, and, you know, we talk to people about, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff, um, and how, you know, even through lucid dreaming, uh, you can accidentally astral project. Well, when you're astral projecting that happens in another realm and people have experiences where they don't mean to do it. It just happens. I had a guy in my studio here, uh, two months ago who accidentally through a lucid dream projected to my house and accurately described how my drive, my driveway is, my, what my house looks like. He drew my house for me. And like, there was a whole thing with that. Maybe that's the weirdest story. I don't know. Um, but uh, unless, unless he's a stalker, then that's not that weird. <laughs> I, I've done my best to verify it. I, I'm 99% sure he isn't. And I do tell him when I talk to him on the phone, if you're stalking me, bro, we have a problem. Well, then I will uh, shoot you. you. Know, people who have like near death experiences and then they say after the near death experiences, then they get thrown into the astral a lot. And, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's definitely the most bizarre, some of the more bizarre stories we've heard on our show too. But speaking of, speaking of the woods and hunting, we've got our boys in expanded perspectives who, I mean, I feel like you guys are more of a hunting show. You guys could have a massive hunting show, but you also do a paranormal show as well. And, uh, tell us, tell us some, some weird stories that you've heard on your podcast. Okay, yeah. I think probably the wildest story that I've heard, because we've heard a lot of wild stories. As you guys know, when you start doing a show, the bigger you get, more and more stories start coming your way. Like in the beginning, we'd have to dig for them, but now they just have to discard. How long have you guys been a podcast again? Yeah, I was going to say, how long have you guys been at it? Almost almost 11 years every week, two shows a week for almost 11 years. Nice. And uh, And you guys are still friends. Yeah, we're best friends. We grew up. I've known yeah. him since the sixth grade. I still live probably 400 yards from him. Uh, caddy corner across the park. Uh, we hunt on the same deer lease together. We do we do everything together. Our kids grew up together. Um, he has guys, two. I have you guys don't go up there to fish. No, it's like Brokeback Mountain. We camp out, <laughs> hang out, and we snuggle in our, in our sleeping bags. 
<laughs> kiss each other goodnight. You, know, you don't do that with your friends. You don't do that with your friends. I don't know every time I go hunting, I just wake up in a porta potty the next morning. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you want to go hunting with us? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, we now know we, we our first planned night. That's that's the night's plans for the first night yeah. when we get there in August. <laughs> so that's perfect. I guess I'll we'll bring in a porta potty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so. We got into podcasting because I work for myself and I'm in a car all day by myself. And when Cam, he used to work for a mun- municipality around here and he was in his, his car all the time by himself. And, you know, when you listen to radio, it's just the same songs on a loop over and over. And then if you listen to sports talk, it's just everybody crying about the local team or it got real boring. And so he was like, you know what a podcast is? And this was back in the day where the iPod looked like a big cigarette lighter. I'm like, it didn't even have a screen on it. You'd have to go through iTunes, you'd have to find what you wanted. There wasn't that many shows. You'd have to download it. And then we would listen to it and he would listen to it and we'd call each other all giddy and like, man, what did you think about that story? And much like Nate had an epiphany about Squatchella, one day we were in the backyard and we're like, why don't we try to podcast? So in the beginning, we had to collect gear. We didn't know how to do it. There wasn't that many shows out there even doing it. And when we tell people what we were doing, we'd have to say like internet radio because nobody knew what podcasting meant. (laughs) And we didn't think it would go anywhere. So we were just kind of doing it as a hobby, but it just slowly started building. And here we are, you know, 11 years later. But I think for me, the craziest story I've heard is Cam's friend that had the sighting with the little people. Yeah. If you want to talk about the little hunter. Yeah. So I've got a, uh, I haven't seen him in a while. And like I said, I call him Doc and I've hunted with him. I've been on this place before. It's down in South Texas. It's down along the uh, Southwest Texas border as you get down into like Ozona and all that as you're making your way over into Mexico. This dude is a known, he's the easiest way I always tell everybody is he's a construction contractor is what he's always done. So he was no BS about anything. He's an old school guy. He's, I think about to sell the business. Anyway, he's an older dude. Never really into this kind of stuff. And then when he found out, of course, his wife found out about us doing the show and all that, it kind of led to this. And one day we're all hanging out and she's like, you're going to have to tell him. And he starts telling me a story that starts out as it almost feels almost like a, like he's pulling my leg. And as it gets in, you start getting more and more to where you're like, this dude's not playing. Like he didn't even want to talk about it. He ended up having an encounter witnessing more than once. 18 inch tall native americans they were moving around he found the first story that it talks about is there was a well it looks like a water trough a concrete water trough that's buried in the ground so it was poured that way for the the wildlife out there so it's because it's you know it's hot and dry this whole thing so there's javelina there's turkey there's a uh, white-tailed deer there's a lot of this out there so it was poured so you can walk in there and it looks like powder around the sides of this in ground water trough because everything comes to it. He said he was up there one day and there were what he thought were toddler tracks, but they were little tiny footprints and he could tell like little human footprints. So he freaks out. He thinks, is there a kid out here? Like what's going on? He starts looking, the tracks lead off into the grass and that's it. And he gets real eerie, creepy feeling fast forward. There's some things go missing around the deer camp. Stuff turns up all the time, little pieces of stuff missing that you wouldn't think anything of nothing major, like the cap off of like a, of a, like a rattle can, a spray paint can caps gone or a sockets missing or little things like that's gone easily misplaced. Jump into it's like around the rut. He's up in the back part of the time. It's cold weather this time. And he's glassing over into this huge Valley back behind him. And he sees what he thinks is Havelina moving up the side of a hill, you know, and it's several hundred yards away. He gets to looking at, he said, it's not, So what it turns out to be, and it looks like an older Native American man and like two or three others, and they're making their way up this hill. They're wearing like clothing. They look like they have like skins on all of this, but they're literally tiny. They're, you know, less than two foot tall as they're making their way through there. So he watches it. Can't believe it. Doesn't tell anybody. Still doesn't really bring it all up because he's like, look, the guys I hunt with, you know, not, you can't talk about this stuff. You know, they're going to just run him out of there. Like, well, what are you doing up here by yourself? You just getting lit and then just going out on your own. <laughs> you jump in there again. It's during spring turkey season. And he said he starts calling on these turkey. They start making their way in there. He's trying to get where he can cut them off. So he hops off into this dried creek. And it's one of those ones, you know, it, when it floods out there, of course, there's water. And otherwise, there's never water in it. So it's all sandy bottomed. 
He said he's down. And the reason he gets off in it is because it's lower than the ground. So he can get down below the turkey eye site. And then he can move up, try to get ahead of them, keep calling them into him. He works his way around. He said the creek makes a big bend to the right. He said as it makes a bend to the right, he kind of looks up. And at this point, he's probably less than 20 yards from like three of these little Native American guys standing there just on the lower edge of that creek looking right at him. He said one of them was like carrying a rabbit. Looks like it's been killed. They got it all tied up and it's like slung over with the string. They've got their gear. They got stuff. He said one of them looks like it's wearing like the cap off of that spray paint can. It's like tied up and hanging off of his belt. Like, I don't know if they use it for a cup. I don't know what they use it for. He says he sees them and they freeze. And he goes, it, the look on their faces was they can't believe he sees them. It's almost a pure shock that not that they got found, but that I can't believe he sees me. He said he just freezes. He's in full camo, camo face mask. He's in everything, like just froze there. He said the feeling that he got was it was so strange because it, was a warm feeling, but he said it was like looking at a, a very majestic like painting or in, to be in the presence of this. He said it felt like it was old, like what I'm in is something that's been here way longer of whatever this feeling is. He said he just nodded at him and kept going, never paid any attention. He said they watched him leave and then took off. That was like 2016, I think. 2017, right around there. I've spoken to him a few more times and he has never seen them since. He was like, that interaction was the last time that anything ever happened. So we'd had it spotted. He had talked to a few guys on there. I don't know that any of them ever came for. I don't think any of them ever had seen anything. They knew about missing stuff, could tell things that happened in and around their stuff, but that was it. But he said, after that point, nothing went missing. Nothing had they never saw them. They never saw any sign of them being on that place. Now, we also, tying into that story, had another story of a fellow that was remodeling an old ranch house down not far from this area, probably within 50 miles or less of where this all took place. He said he goes in there one morning, way before daylight. It's in the summer. They're going to get started at daylight because it's so brutally hot. He goes in there. He said his, they were putting all their tools in five gallon buckets and just leaving them in there, whatever they chalk lines and all this stuff as they were framing and doing all this work. He said he goes in there and it's, you know, barely can see and the buckets had been turned over and stuff scattered everywhere. So he's like, well, I guess the coons came in digging through stuff. Maybe somebody left something and they got him. But he goes, he goes to look and notices there's stuff scuffling around inside there, goes out some of the, you know, where they hadn't put the windows in yet, jumps out the holes and takes off. At this point, he says he starts seeing this chalk line of his. You can not the same guy. This isn't the same dude that saw him the first time. This is a different guy. He starts noticing this chalk line in there. He said it's strung out in the mesquite trees and all that. He goes out there. There's three or four, again, two foot tall, what look like natives or brownies or dwindies or however you want to describe them in the, this little mesquite flat watching. And he said they have been taking little things of theirs of whatever was in this bucket and spooked and ran off. He said, after that encounter, we never had anything else go missing, nothing else. We never saw another sign, whatever it is. So whatever's down in there is like the land that time forgot. And you can slip off down in there and sometimes get some of that. So, yeah, that's one of my, I would have thought it was straight BS if I had not sat there and had him tell me. It was, it was one of those, like, he didn't want to even talk about it. His wife's the one that forced it on him to talk about it. And then after that. Like was that not warm really feeling? Activated. Was the warm feeling that he had, was he peeing his pants? Because that's probably exactly what I would feel. Probably. Yeah, right? Probably. A hundred percent. Yeah, it was a porta potty when you need it. <laughs> when he's talking about it, he's not a romantic guy, right? Like, we're right. talking about a dude that, you know, he's quite a, he's older, not a romantic dude. Like I said, no nonsense, straight, hardworking dude. So when he started talking about having these feelings, it was very strange for him to be like, man, it felt like wholesome. It felt warm. Like it felt in like, this is the way things are. Like it wasn't an eerie feeling, a negative feeling. He was like, I felt honored to even be there to get to see this at the whole thing. And I said, so what did you do? Cause he's like riding, he rides a bike. So he like rides his, I don't mean a motorcycle, a bicycle. So he like rides his bicycle down in there. So there's no smell. There's no sounds. You can slip around. So he was slipping around like a ninja the whole time. Right. And that's what he was like, man. I didn't know what to do. He said, I nodded my head and took off. 
And just the way he talks about it, he was like, I, I didn't know any way to react after it was all over. The funny part is after that encounter, he said he left, didn't even hunt the turkey, got back up, got on his stuff, went all the way back to the camper or back to the, the camp, started loading stuff up. He was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. And it is, that's why his wife was like, you have to tell him because it kind of threw him for a curve. He's like, it, I don't have any idea what just happened. I love it. But of course you do. That's why. Of course you do. He just made Nate's day. Kim, Nate has this weird obsession with the little people. We talk about it on our show often. Same. Yeah, same. I same. mean, same. and we know that like Homo floriensis is scientifically proven as a little person. Yeah. That, you know, that they found in Indonesia. And I mean, it's yeah. proven that they've had that. And just like Tony and Luke were talking about with parallel dimensions and the missing 411 and stuff, a lot of the sightings of these little fey folk, it makes you wonder, are there parallel dimensions? It's something that's bled through. Because oftentimes in these cases, the, 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 the creatures are little things that are seen, these fey, these gnomes, whatever they look like, they seem shocked. Like, why can you see me? You're not supposed to be able to see me. And they're just as shocked as the partners, person that witnesses it. And so it's like, what is that? I mean, there's all kinds of cases from all over the UK, especially of people seeing these little gnomes, mm -hmm. like in their gardens or sprites. They go by lots of different names, but it's only for a few seconds. It's, and it's, Kyle, it's interesting, you, man. Like uh, what you were saying about, uh, about this reminds me of a story that we, we didn't do on the show. Um, but I go fishing up in Fort Smith, Montana. At a place called Refuge, and there near to that, there is a, a big ranch, and there's a bunch of really old, hardened cowboys that work this ranch out there, and they have stories of the Duende out there. They see, and these are like, it, it would be to me the same thing you're describing. This this guy, like these are like no nonsense, work their whole lives, work hard, um, but they have these stories that they're real reluctant to tell. But they've told some of the, the guides that that we work with when we go fly fishing up there, and said. There's these old boys up on the ranch and they swear and you, you have to get them to talk about it. And they won't talk about it unless they know you, but we've, we've hung with them a few times and they will tell stories of these little people. And it is like a, a no nonsense. These are guys aren't, aren't weaving tall tales to impress some fishing guides. It's like these guys are dead serious that there are, there are things out there. And this is on like the crow Nate, this is on crow nation land. So you have some sort of weird things also happen on reservations, which <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have several Duende stories that come just like that. And it's like New Mexico. We've yeah, as I say, some Duende. cultures treat it as like an omen. I know this guy that was doing like seismic surveys in Arizona. They were on a reservation. And they, for, for whatever reason, they had a bunch of guys they had hired that were Brazilian. And they come running down the hill because they saw a Duende and they quit and left the job site and never came back. Yeah. So to them, it was like, it's an omen. It's something that they don't want to, they don't want to yeah. mess with. It's a harbinger people, for something bad's going to happen. Those guys said they thought it was a raccoon at first. That's during what they the thought day, it was. Walking on its back feet. What it was, raccoon. was a small duende or little person, but it had like a rabbit or, or a coon pelt that it was wearing. Yeah. Had a little walking stick, the whole thing. These dudes, like seven so grown men crazy, blasted dude. out of there. That's gone. Crazy. Yeah. Just, well, that's what I was going to say. So we were in Peru and uh, Luke and I, took a trip to with with podcast uh some of our fans to peru last summer and we're coming out of bojante tambo with some of those huge smash massive stones and there's this marketplace and this guy has these little these little like gnome statues that he's selling and tim alberino's with us and we're like i'm like ask him in spanish if he's seen these things and the guy then begins to tell a story he's like down to the years like 18 years ago i was up in the mountains here in peru and i saw one and it was walking over the hill and they're real and then he said the same thing he took off because it's a bad sign when you see one of these things good things do not happen so you don't want to you don't want to interact with the little people that's for sure and uh it's funny how you can have these stories on these shows of giants people running into mm -hmm. giants and then people running into these little tiny uh native americans and it just makes you scratch your head of what what's possible and what's out there and uh, if a 400 pound eight foot tall hairy hominid can hide out there i'm sure an 18 inch tall dwindy wouldn't have a real a problem. easier yeah well those poor guys yeah we've had like, people tell us that the, they've had stuff missing like in yeah. cam story stuff around the house and if they started leaving little gifts then like all the mischievousness would go away. Like, yeah, like whatever it was, or yeah. liquor, little things like that out for them. Cause Cause little like offerings. The yeah, little, little shots of fireball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoa. I don't know if you <laughs> want drunk Dwindies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're problems already. You get them lit. 
Dude, that's all. It'd be like getting a toddler drunk. That's the worst idea. Then they just start multiplying. Then you have a bunch of them at your house. And then you got to yeah. deal with them. And then the neighbor head has a problem. The HOA gets involved. All right. Then yeah. they're throwing a party in Joshua right? Tree. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Garage door comes up. They all take off. You got to try to round them up like you're herding chickens. <laughs> Next thing, you're head first in a porta potty in the fourth dimension, and it's just a bad day. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. feet. They're like, this is where we go. Yeah. I bet you, Tony, you could start a business where you just get a flatbed trailer, put a porta potty on it, call it porta potty, just drive it around Tennessee, portal potty, charge ten yeah. bucks to go in, see what happens. I think y'all need to copyright hey, the name Portal Potty right now. I, I think I think that might be a plan. That, that's a good business plan right there. I think yeah. we start that up and see what, how, if it takes off. We can do a tour. If things Let's just do one at like Squatchella. Yeah. yeah. Like, like a special Portal Potty. Make it like a vendor truck. Make it a vendor uh, truck. It's a picture made in the Portal Potty. Yeah. It's, it's like those go. fortune things. You pay for the fortune. You get it. You go in the Portal Potty and you get like some um, and, you know <laughs> interdimensional message. You open the door and soul tans there. You come yeah. out with a keychain that's shaped like a turd. <laughs> That's just the ring. That was the lid. Thank you for everybody that shows the lid ring. And thank you for coming to our to our brainstorming session. Called yeah. the portal potty. A portal the portal potty. Tony, you should have them bring a porta potty for the stage. And when you start your segment on the just spot, come out of it. Come, come out, out of the potty. Oh. I'll wheel it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I don't know how I do it. What is this? Is this Joshua Cherry? I'm scared. <laughs> you guys are missing right you now. Close it. Oh, and again, Tony comes out. But uh, let's let's shift up north here to the uh, well, actually, I guess south, deep south in the floor. Deep south, baby. Yeah, we got the ninjas or butterflies guys here. You guys are uh, tell us a little about yourself. How long you've been a podcast? How you got started? And um, sing us a song, dang it! Come on, yeah. that's what we came for. I, you guys, yeah, so, so yeah, we're ninjas or butterflies. We um, describe ourselves as jack jack of all trades and masters of all of them. Every single one. Yeah, we're very skilled in so many things. Um, everything we say is true. Everything we say is 100% true. Definitely not a joke. 80% of the time. Um, no, we started this podcast, what, a year and a half ago? Fall of 2021, yeah. We're about 90 episodes in now. Yeah, and uh, we just started it because we wanted to start a podcast talking about whatever. That's why we named it Ninjas or Butterflies because it means absolutely nothing like our podcast. But also means everything. And it does mean everything yeah. to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, no, we just... <laughs> we talk about comedy, conspiracy, and that's the, that's the big thing is we just try to find the funny in it. And so a lot of times there's it's we're not talking anything uh, intergalactical or spiritual, and it's just poop stories and uh, talking about our everyday lives and what's happening in the news. And then suddenly Josh is like, by the way, everything that you've ever known is wrong. And this is why. And there's a conspiracy that we just dive into. And so it's been really fun because like you said, like the, we used to be able to have to go out and search a ton. And Josh still does a lot of that studying, but a lot of it we've been getting like, Hey, recommendations from, from, you know, from a lot of people. So that's, that's the cool thing is I know that we're never going to run out of material. Yeah. You guys have been doing it, you know, for 11 years. So I know that's got to be huge. Like a wonder, like, man, what are we going to, what are we going to talk about on our thousands, thousands episode or whatever yeah. it may be, but. It's physical it's weight fun. to the hard drive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but we have fun with it. I love, I'm obsessed with everything that doesn't make sense. And that's why I love all of y'all's podcasts. And we steal a lot of material from you guys. And just, we give like the spark note versions of all of your stories pretty much. Yeah, we take it out all no the one knows is anymore. Yeah. No one knows what spark notes is. No one knows what that is anymore. We're too old. It's just like a pay phone. Sorry, Josh is 50 years old. I am. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, but as like, far as stories like go, notes. yeah. Yeah. But as far as stories go, we've had just so many like special personal stories. Like you've had UFO, UFO sightings. One of our favorite episodes is me telling a ghost story that, um, that happened to me, but it was one of those things where a lot of the time I just didn't think that door was ever even there. You know, that I didn't believe in ghosts, don't believe in aliens, that kind of things. But then when certain things happen to you, you obviously, right. You're like, man, this, the door that I didn't even know existed just opened up and I'm now I'm questioning everything. And so that was kind of my, um, cause I came from just like, I just want to have fun. I would goof around. And then we would just get into these stories and then Josh would be like, have you ever thought about this? And Andrew would be like, yeah, have, but this has a certain meaning. And it's like just this domino effect of just deeper and deeper conspiracies or, uh, maybe different meanings, uh, that were just right in front of our faces the whole time. I don't know. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I've seen, for what I know of, two UFOs for sure. And the second time, I peed all down my leg. So 
<laughs> yeah, we were in Nash, um, outside of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, yeah. and in a cabin. Place and just it. that night before, I had this weird interaction when I was just outside, and we're literally in rural. Like there is no neighbors. We are in the middle of the Tennessee wilderness, and I like I'm on the phone, and I see like this weird black shadow thing and i hear the i'm on gravel and i hear the gravel start running towards me it's moving towards me and it gets louder and louder i look all i see this black figure and i'm like freaking out i get off the phone i go inside and then later that night josh is at two o'clock in the morning yeah i was i was um peeing off the front deck and i felt like something was like watching me and i look and there was just this orb above the trees i'm like yo what the heck I'm like, is that a star? Because it looks like it's like super close. And all of a sudden, I just went like, and it just shot off over the horizon. And that's when I peed all on my leg and ran inside. And then he looked behind him and there was another light in the corner, but that was the Airbnb camera that was recording him apparently the whole time. So they're like, sorry, we peed off your deck, you know? Yeah. Now we can, so, now you can pick that. You can see that video online now. It's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Patreon, <99. baby. laughs> Dude, I think I think my favorite story though that we've told is Andy your ghost story because we were filming a Halloween episode and Andy's always told this story where there's a voice recorded and he always heard it like my name's Keegan as the story goes it was a recorder that was in a room he walked into on a ghost tour this is very long story short but he plays the recording on the podcast for the other guests who were listening and it was the first time we had headphones on and like listened to it and I'm like hold on me and another guy, we looked at each other. We're like, that didn't say my name's Keegan. We're like, at the same time, what'd you hear? We both said Andy DeNoon. And so he's telling this ghost story with no idea that his name is in the recording. And yeah, because just- we've told the story like two, like for two or three years before that when yeah. I moved down here. And um, when the recording came through, it was a really weird night. It kind of like opened I adores for me, like, you know, it was Halloween night. It was like super dumb of me to do this, just to tag along on this ghost tour with my friend. Um, and, you know, looking back now, but when we've uh, listened to the recording, he's like, Hey, I have this. And I think this is what it's saying. So in my mind, it's like, my name is Keegan. Like all these things were like, what is this ghost? Like, you know, this little girl, Keegan, poor girl. And then, so we've always told that story. And then no joke. We had the one we redid on the podcast. We had people who had never heard the recording before. And so they're like, Oh, wow. You know, they heard it. That's super scary. But then I'm like, wait, you guys are hearing something different. Yeah. They're like, no, we heard your name. I'm like, no, 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 there's no way. Do you have it? Uh, yeah, I can find it. And then, um, he plays it. And, uh, I think we both, you could see it. I'm so glad we were recording because it was genuine, genuine terrifying. fear. Yeah. And his buddy that did this ghost tour thing, he's like a professional ghost hunter or something. Like yeah, a- amateur guy. Yeah. But he just does, he has all the proper equipment. He's had very little success, but. He wears like the jumpsuit with the backpack and the big gun that like, <laughs> yes. you know. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those guys. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to hear it? All right, yeah. here's the recording that um, that was sent. The story. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. <laughs> Jeez. You know, oh, that, that was not the ghost. No. Okay, ghost. all right. Here he is. So when we hear that, we like, don't like that. <laughs> we said it's because I thought it was my name is Keegan, but then if you listen to it again, I was just like, now, now my buddy can't unhear it either. Name so so scary, <laughs> it's so terrifying. But that's the thing It's like, well, we can't explain that. Like I can't, and so it's hard for me to wrap my mind around or still be in denial of like, you know, this certain spiritual realm not existing and you know on Earth as we we play it up in movies and stuff like that. But I'm like that felt very much like a horror movie and that felt very scary. So yeah, just fun things like any, that, lighthearted stuff, <laughs> just easy, light work. Uh, yeah. Did you did you notice any uh, anything happening after that experience that you picked up that uh, that EVP and stuff? Did anything like they talk about hitchhiker effects and stuff like that? I mean, did you ever no. have any other experiences? I don't know anything about a hitchhiker. Well, no, effect, yeah, because he told me like you guys prayed and stuff. Like, hey, you don't have, or he's like, yeah, he mission to. Yeah, he has that. He had a whole protocol, and I just thought it was so silly when I first got there because he would just talk to the house, talk to whoever's in it. And I'm like, what is this? I love scary movies. So I'm like, this is fun, whatever. But at the very end, there's there is that prayer. that says, you do not have permission to leave with us. Uh, you know, like this is, this is something we're, you know, we're trying to help you. He's like, apparently he tried to go back there or something. And so I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing that I've seen afterwards, but it definitely has just changed my perspective to one, just respect that side of, uh, the unknown a little bit more. And, you know, if you don't know much or you're not very, um, well defended, you're just, 
you're setting yourself up for failure or for open attacks or something. And yeah. luckily, I, I feel like I'm not possessed. So that's good. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> Josh, well, hallelujah. Josh, Josh told me, you know, after that, you did get addicted to hitchhiking and now he's he, he seen yeah <laughs> it is weird and i do i do wake up in the woods covered in blood naked sometimes once there's a full moon but i don't but i think that's just my that medication a yeah. great podcast idea where you just you just go out hitchhiking and then you record whatever happens and then you just put it out on the internet and this podcast is giving me so many good ideas <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. but uh you know just go out hitchhiking and record whatever the hell happens because i'm sure there's some weird stories that are to be told and some and some weird places you'll be taken i'd but, get uh, murdered first episode <laughs> like, well that was a short run <laughs> so I guess I guess Luke, we can kind of dive into blur. Well, I want to ask the guys uh, if dinosaurs are real. Or, or is Helen Keller real? Is dinosaurs real? Did big well, and are they the same? They're dead. <laughs> are they the same? <laughs> and what portal did Helen Keller come out of? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Um, dinosaurs, yeah. I mean, we got gators down here, which are like literal dinosaurs. We got sandhill cranes that are like six feet tall. <laughs> They're literal dinosaurs. They, they, they cackle like velociraptors. Ra raptors. Yeah. Raptors. <laughs> yeah. They got them velociraptors down here. Yeah. Um, Helen Keller, I don't think so. I don't think she was real. I believe, I believe more in dinosaurs than I do in Helen Keller. <laughs> That's so. so sad. Isn't that so sad? I agree. I agree with Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All our minds are just warped. Dude, I, dude, I yeah. love your guys' show. It, your show's so fun. It is... God just cracks me up. Like the, I mean, you guys hit us out of left field when we came on with it's this. Just with I was like, I didn't even thought about it. And they were talking Luke, about you froze, buddy. Brain. You're You're complimenting us. Can you say it again? No one's letting that actually happen. <laughs> no, please say it again. <laughs> yeah, but dude, he's more. in a parallel dimension. Yeah, it's okay. He's in the parallel. Yeah. The, the, the great, the great thing is with Riverside, it wouldn't have come out as frozen at all. And so, like, the audience is going to be like, what do you guys mean he's frozen? We heard every word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so, oh. next time somebody freezes, we just keep nodding. <laughs> yes, yes. Like Jack Nicholson. You'd be uh, saying all kinds of things about it. your mother. Who's just told you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so, no, <sorry>, boys. <laughs> no. I, guess, uh, I guess we'll talk about ourselves, our favorite, our favorite topic. We, uh, you know, Blurry Creatures started... We've been, uh, we're going on four years now. The, I guess technically it started in 2019 in the fall of 2019, um, got the, uh, was like remodeling a house and just listening to weird stories like this and, you know, not to go back to the hunters, but I had listened to, I don't know, seven or eight years and it was always the hunters stories that really convinced me something about like, you know, like Cam, you were talking about, you know, your buddy who's just this, he's not the He's not this kind of guy that makes up anything. He's almost too serious. And you you hear about 50, 60 of those things, and you're like, there's something to all of this paranormal realm. But the hunters and the cops and the military guys, they they sort of are no-nonsense fellas. And then when they tell their story, I, I was like, we got to do something. So the logo was designed in 2019. And then I asked Luke in the, the summer of COVID, hey, Luke, you want to do this podcast about Bigfoot, but we're going to kind of go, we're also going to tie in like sort of this biblical worldview, biblical perspective of like, you know, how do you have faith and also hear all this weird stuff and kind of tie the two together. And, you know, the Bible's full of stories about giants and all this other weird stuff that nobody wants to talk about at church, but we could talk about it on Blurry Creatures because it's just two dudes and no one's going to like come after us and try to like kick us off the church council. We can get as weird as we want. So that's right. And we do. And that's that's when it starts. About four years into Blurry Creatures, and we started talking about Bigfoot. And I, I'm sure you got your favorite story, Luke, uh, that you've heard on Blurry. But I, I, I'll, I'll tell my favorite story because we, about Sasquatch. We've heard some wild stuff, like some people who supposedly go underground in the... And work with the military. And, you know, some of those stories are hard to wrap your mind around. But my favorite Bigfoot story that we heard on the podcast was a guy came on the show and uh, he goes to, I think it was in South Carolina. He goes to camping at some Airbnb with his family. And um, he's into Sasquatch. He's he's thinking about it. He his, his kids are, you know, they're listening to the podcast and they're like, they're into this creature. Well, he's walking with his family along the... Uh, a trail one day and they're just out doing their thing, looking for, looking for Bigfoot. Don't see anything. Don't have any experience. Come back home. They go into the cabin. And then he said, he lays down in the cabin, small cabin. 
And all of a sudden, it like, you know, sort of later in the night, his whole visual senses get taken over. He's like, I'm, it's like I'm watching a movie in my mind, but it's like, I can't, I can't get out of it. I, I can't see anything in the room. I can feel the room. I can feel what's going on. I know I'm still in the cabin, but I'm watching a movie of me and my family walking through the woods. And I see this, I see the viewpoint of a Sasquatch in the bushes watching me and my family walking from earlier in the day. So his whole take was this Sasquatch is watching him from the ridge, knows he's looking they're they're looking for him. But he's somehow managed to record this event with his family. He said, I could see all the details, the trees. I could see he was behind a bush and kind of going in and out. And he projects it into my mind. And then he walk, I, he like leaves the cabin. And then all of a sudden my senses come back and I'm back laying there. But for like a minute or two, I'm, re- I'm watching a rerun of my day before of this Sasquatch watching me. So he gets to see the viewpoint of the Sasquatch. I thought, you know, we've heard the stories of them taking, they can, t- they can talk to you directly. They can, uh, mess with time and, and they seem to fade in and out, but a lot of mind speak happens where they can directly communicate with you and say things. But this was the first time I, I've heard like, <laughs> you get the old, uh, Sasquatch vision, the movie like Wonka vision, but that's right. I don't know. I thought that was a wild one. I hadn't heard anything that crazy. Um, but what about you, Luke? Yeah, uh, the one that comes to mind is 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 the Roger episode only because uh, it, it does have a Sasquatch element, and we had gotten into this as Nate said. We started this thing talking about Bigfoot, and then we started getting the giants. I think episode eleven of our show, and we're you know four years into this now. Um, but we had this episode where a guy dug up giant bones on his property, old Minnesota farmer, like saltier. Didn't even have like a cell phone. I think he had to call him on a landline. Like this guy didn't have a computer. He was like super believable for the, to this point. So we go through this episode talking about him digging up giant bones in a, in a mound on his property. He has a farm in Minnesota. says his wife won't come up there because it's, it's scary and weird there now. And this episode was like the turning point for me in our, in our show, because we're kind of wrapping up his story about the giant bones and the government coming out and telling him to refill it in. It's part of the native American repatriation repatri- uh, repatri- uh, act, whatever, never say that where you can't dig in it anymore, even though it's on his property. He claims he found giant bones in there. And we remembered at the end to ask him about Bigfoot because we we were like, we that's how we usually start all of our shows is what's your what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? And so we're like, hey, by the way, Roger, we meant to ask you at the beginning. Sorry about this. You know, what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? And he's like, Well, you know, I got three that come up to the barn. He's like, They braid my they braid my horse's hair. And I and I've named them. And, and he goes, he starts tells that he's named these three Bigfoot. And then he goes out there and he plays his Native American flute for him. And that <laughs> And then it goes in, it takes the hardest right turn of all time. He starts talking about how the Bigfoot are actually on this serpent mound on his property. He dug into and found the giant bones. There's actually a portal on the egg that's in the serpent's mouth. And out of this portal comes something called a boar crock. Never heard of it before, but we looked it up. And this is actually like an an Egyptian um, kind of hybrid creature that they believed in, which was like part boar and part crock. I was thinking man, bear, pig there. It was like half boar, (laughs) half crock half man you know it's like man bear pig um but he said it comes out there and it was attacking things and so the bigfoot which he called he called the uh, the rice lakers there's three it was nature were their names it was white becca. diamond becca. becca white diamond and little one <laughs> and they would protect they were protecting his farm from these boar crocs yeah and uh it, there was a dog man in his driveway as well he there was a dog man like, but he had like I mean, all of it just, it's, 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 it's unbelievable, right? You know, yeah. But like, the thing is though, you have this like old salty, crusty farmer from Minnesota and he's like, this is what happens on my property. My wife won't come up here and my neighbor's seen Thunderbirds and he's like, you know, we've got a serpent mound and, a, and giant bones. And by the way, <laughs> these yeah. three Bigfoot, they come up and, and they braid my horse's hair and I play flute music for him. And you're just like, my favorite part of that story. What? He's, he's in, he's in the <laughs> barn. He said, he's in his barn and he's like, well, I just had to tell him the gospel. I had to witness to the Sasquatch. <laughs> he preaches so he, to the Sasquatch. He preaches to the Sasquatch. <laughs> and I just, you know, we are so early. This is like episode 30 something. We're like, 
Somebody has to. Somebody, Some, yeah. Somebody's got to tell them about the Lord. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, Sorry, I was late. I was having communion with Sasquatch. This right. Dude, like that. <laughs> you know, it was so wild, and he was so matter of fact about these things, and it's such, such a hard turn. It's like it's one of the more unforgettable. Now we've talked about all kinds of crazy stuff on the show, you know, as, as well as you know, most of you guys have, you know, everything from satanic ritual abuse and um, just wild stuff, portals yeah. and pantries. We had an episode with a portal in a pantry, not a porta potty. Yeah. Um, deep underground military bases and aliens and all, and, and so you you, you kind of get. There's this level, I think, where you level up into this weirdness that sort of becomes status quo, right? And um, but that was really like the the turning point where you're like, dude, this is so weird. And he is so matter of fact, like like some dude you would see like at the at the co-op, like you know, buying buying seed for the farm, and this guy's telling you these doesn't have a computer. He's telling these wild stories about Vorcrocs and portals and Bigfoot. And this intergalactic battle that's happening on his property where, where he found giant bones. And so I, wildest it's, it's there, it's up there, but it was just, I always kind of go back to that one because it was so like it, it, it hit as that hit you out of left field when you, we thought we were wrapping the episode and he's like, Oh, by the way, I got more for you. And here's what happened. You're like, dude, this, this, you don't stop talking. This is, yeah. Hey, can I add a follow up question? <laughs> right. Exactly. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> so well, uh, that. That's the one I go to, yeah. I'll tell you, uh, the the braiding hair thing is something I heard years ago um, mm -hmm. uh, by, uh, who was it? it I, Nate, you might know the guy, uh, Kumbo Baker. Uh, I, don't I don't know. No? Uh, mm -hmm. So Kumbo, years ago, came out talking about uh, how he came across cases with Bigfoot where um, people were having big and I, maybe it was his horses i don't know but the the idea of braiding the 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 mane the hair on the horse uh the other side of that story the other half of that that you guys didn't get that i was told years ago is that they do that while they're doing the freaky with the horse oh oh yeah wow. this, this family show just yeah. leveled up to pg-13 so. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard the little people do it and they ride the horses yeah, at night different. they take them out and they ride around like like and then they braid their hair. It's not the Sasquatch. That's what I've heard. Did he well, see the Sasquatch doing it? No, I don't he, think so. Because, I mean, he had so many other weird things happening on that property that maybe was a little people. Maybe he just didn't share that with us. You know, he was holding some things back. Yeah, maybe Man, that's how we get... a lot of things you can't unsee. <laughs> that would be one of them. I'm a very visual person, and I'm not liking this podcast yeah, right now. This is, <laughs> I, can, I can't unsee it, but I can never talk of it again. Well, yeah, we did have a centaur story on the show. Maybe that's how we got the centaur, the man, the man bear pig. This, is, this was a funny email we got. This guy was talking about how back in the... It was like like the early... It's like 1920, uh, 1910, somewhere in there. He said his grandpa was a very serious guy. He used to tell the story. He said that they would... They were on their farm at night. He had like a huge family, bunch of people, three generations of people out on the front porch in the middle. You just, you know, it's, it's hot. They sat outside and they said, sure enough, this thing comes running down their driveway. And we probably emailed this guy a couple of times and it stops and everyone sees it and they all look. And at the end of their driveway is no joke, a centaur. And it looks at them. And then they all look at it and then it takes off into the bushes. And uh, his grandpa used to tell the story at like family gatherings for years that they saw one of these things and it's like straight out of Narnia. Right. And you, and, and Luke and I were early in our show going, I mean, are people just messing with us? And we emailed the guy back. He's like, no, I, I swear. I promise. My grandpa told the story like all the time, his whole family saw it. And uh, I think he was the youngest, so he and it was and the crazy thing was a reverse centaur, so it was <laughs> it was no pants and just a horse head. <laughs> terrifying about everybody. Ter way more terrifying, but actually. I think that's the hardest part about these shows is who do you believe and why do you believe them? And I guess maybe maybe we everyone can go around and um, just kind of maybe wrap it up. That like, wh what was your mindset before you started your podcast, and what is it now? I think would be a good like wrap up sort of discussion. Why do I feel like everybody's waiting for me to say something? No, you don't have, I'll go for. I'll go first. Is, is it? <laughs> Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Uh, let me let me go quickly here because I think this is fascinating. Because for me, it's, I've always been the skeptic on our show with Nate. Because Nate talked about the top of it. He you know he had this ten thousand hours of listening to Bigfoot shows. 
while he was remodeling houses. And so he just, and I've always had a mild interest, maybe mild to moderate interest in, in Bigfoot. And so I just thought it'd be fun to talk about these things that are weird, you know, it's, it is fun, right? It, it's, it's fascinating to think about and, and, and just, and sort of investigate and have discourse around things that don't have real solid answers and just try to figure it out. And that's what we've been trying to do, get better answers to, to maybe unanswerable questions, but you know, doing that all through a biblical world worldview and through a biblical lens is really where our show lives. And wh- what I was very anti having an alien discussion just at the beginning. I was, I was like, I don't want to talk about this, this is stupid. Like the same thing is all stupid. I don't want to talk about it. And, and for me, you, I think we had enough guests on that, that were giving compelling sort of um, paradigms for understanding this and, and framing the, the alien phenomena and kind of looking at the, what the narrative is that's out there versus what, what the Bible has to say about stuff like that with, uh, you know, what it was an extraterrestrial, you know, by definition, you angels are extraterrestrial. They're not of earth. Um, and we are. And so sort of, ch- Changing the way I, th- I were, was to think about and discuss this thing, um, I, I found space within my expanded paradigm to discuss these, to discuss it. And I was very much not in that space. I remember telling Nate, I don't want to have an alien show. Let's not do this. This is, this is dumb. We're going to lose all. If we had any credibility to start out with, we're about to lose it. <laughs> um, but the, it, we always say that our, our show is a journey podcast and we do start with Bigfoot and these experts in Bigfoot. And we've kind of, we've journeyed down into all the things that we just sort of talked about. Um, and to, you know, Dr. Michael Heiser said on our show, who was just really one of the, in our minds, Nate and our, Nate in my mind, I won't speak for Nate, but in, in our minds, it was, he, he's really, he's really a cornerstone to these conversations as, as, as a Christian. He wrote the book, The Unseen Realm. And he said, that if just one of these accounts are true that we that we listen to and talk about, if it's just one is true, then it, it it breaks the paradigm, and you have to expand your paradigm to encompass and, and the, these things, right? So if just one Bigfoot sighting is real, you know, just one of these alien encounters is real, and, and just one out of out of the thousands and thousands that happen, then then we've got to figure out how we fit this inside our worldview. And for me, that actually happened, and you know, we lost Mike last year, and he was just a, he became a great friend, but I think he was he was revolutionary in the way he compiled and put things out there um and, and when he when he said those things to us it really changed the way i thought about those things for, for, for me personally the journey has really been like spending my paradigm to consider and, and i think having these conversations around the weird the weird things in the bible and the weird things people experience is um is something that's missing this discourse is missing not in this circle right here by any means but just in 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 christendom in general um, and I think we do ourselves a great disservice if we don't talk about the weird stuff and try to contextualize that from the point of view of our faith. If we don't do that, um, then I always say this, the world's more than willing to disciple us in what they want us to believe, what the world wants us to believe about these things. And that is always going to be contrary to the truths, the, the biblical truths and what the Bible says. And so uh, that journey has been wild to me, like just kind of flipping that switch on and saying, I can consider this and I do now. Um, and I have a good, I have a good answer. I think for what what's happening here. Now, do we, are we going to know? Maybe not till they till we have disclosure, but we're getting very close to that. So, yeah, for me that was that's been the journey, sort of around our content. You get the alien award. Thanks, I'll take it. Give me an iced out chain, baby. What about you, Tony? Uh, when I first started, uh, for for me. The way the podcast started, I was a tractor trailer driver and uh, God called me to do this podcast. And um, I've told the story before, but I won't go over deep into it. But just um, it wasn't my comfort zone. I mean, I was literally driving my truck. I felt the Holy Spirit say, you're going to be a podcast. You're going to work with Wes Gomer from Sasquatch Chronicles. Never talked to the guy my entire life. And a month later, he's calling me and um, that launched the podcast. And it was a big growing experience for me because, you know, up to that point, I was interested in the Bigfoot topic, um, listened to Wes's show, uh, really looked around online about it. But outside of the topic, I really didn't talk about a whole lot of the stuff, really wasn't really that interested. And I felt a strong pull to start a show where you talk about everything. And that was very uncomfortable for me. I didn't know what to talk about. Like, I remember my first ufo uh show was in the first five episodes 
this guy Roger was on and he's talking about this up close encounter that he had of, of a UFO. I mean, like it's huge. It was right there. And I'm just like, what the heck am I, what am I doing? Like what? And then, so like, there's this whole inner struggle because I knew how the podcast started. So I had this, like, I put this pressure on myself of, um, making sure I don't let God down and take this show in a direction it wasn't meant to go. And I didn't know what that direction was supposed to be. And kind of like what you said, it, it was the, the show, I've come to understand that the show is about people's experiences, but it's also about my journey through these topics. For seven years, you know, 650 episodes, you get to hear the transition of my mindset where first episode was farmer sees two Sasquatch in a field. And it was just me talking to this guy in Pennsylvania to now we're talking about porta potties and like, yeah. you know, other realms and stuff. And, it, and, the, and it's like, how did you get there? And it was a slow trickle effect of me being exposed to people's experiences and finding that, you know, some of these wild experiences have been able to be verifiable and that shapes your, tra- your, your mindset. And, and you have to take that into consideration. And um, for me, like when I first started the show, you know, I, I, my first email, the first email I ever got was a woman saying she saw Slenderman, never brought her on the show because I wasn't ready for it. I, I, if somebody emailed me now and said, I saw Slenderman, let's go. Topa, baby, let's do this. <laughs> and, uh, and like, you know, but people would email about their dreams. And early in the day, in those days, I was like, why, why do I want to talk to you about your dreams? I have dreams too. There's nothing weird about that. I never, I, 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 I never, uh, in those days, looked at everything the way I look at it now, and now I'm like, you dope. Like the whole the whole scripture is riddled with dreams and dream interpretation and God speaking to people through dreams. Like, of course, the dream state is something to be thought about and talked about. And then when you start talking to people about the dream state, and then you start learning about the lucid dreaming. Well, what is lucid dreaming? Because I've never experienced that, but they're saying that this is. A, a dream that they had that was more real than here. And the things that happened there seem to overlap here. And, and then you start talking to people who had experience with other people in their dreams. And then in this reality, they share notes and say, yeah, I saw you in my dream last night too. And yeah, the, the, that room. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. And it's like, well, what is that? You know? And so it just takes you down this whole road that again, you guys started a show and you're like, let's talk about Bigfoot. And it's like, well, that's the, like, like, like Bigfoot is just a topic now that we do. And it all just was like this domino effect. Um, yeah. So like for me, it was just this, uh, it, it, I feel like it's a personal journey as well. I've, I look at my show as um, uh, it's like a mixed bag. And I'm, I'm fairly convinced that reality is far more stranger than I can fathom. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm just, I'm here for the ride, you know, and I'm not, I don't really, uh, I also struggled early on. I'm like, you know, I, I felt this like almost weight, like, well, I'm the host of the show. Like, I, I don't want to, like you were talking about validation and, you know, hurting your credibility and stuff. And I was just like, you know, if I bring this person on, if I talk about this, like, what is that going to do to the show? Am I going to ruin the show? And I, and I just got to the point where I'm like, you know what, just like with people's salvation, like I, it's not my job to make you believe in Jesus Christ as your savior. That's not my job. My job is to lead you to the water. It's between you and the Holy Spirit. My job's done. And so I look at it the same way at the show where it's like, you know, I present the stories of people's experiences that they've gone through. I've personally experienced things that I can't explain that people would call me crazy for. I've talked to people on the show that have shared their personal experiences that I've been able to verify that if I couldn't have verified, I'm like, I don't know. So I'm at the point where it's just like, listen, we present the story to you as the audience. It's your decision to choose what you want to believe. It's, 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 it's my personal journey, but it's the audience as well. It's their personal journey through the weird. And that's just kind of where I leave it at. Yeah. And that, yeah, I think I agree with like Tony saying is like, we've experienced a similar thing where we, I thought we would learn more over time, but I have actually, I've got more questions now than when we started 10 years ago. And like Tony was saying, we present these stories for the audience to listen to. It's up to them to judge what they think about it because we get people, you know, that, email and be like, well, how do you vet these stories? Or that yeah. guy's story was impossible. And I'm like, look, it's impossible for me to say that he did or didn't experience what he experienced. That's re- that's ridiculous to me. And whether somebody physically saw a biological Sasquatch or it was just a mirage or a hallucination, whatever it was, the effect, the impact it has on that person is exactly the same. It's changed their life forever. 
So I've got people that have come to us on air, off air, people that didn't even know we did a show that have told us these stories. And you can tell, man, they have no reason to make this stuff up. I used to haul hay for an old rancher when I was a kid. I did. I know him my whole life. And after he heard about our show, he pulled me aside one day and said that he saw a Sasquatch on his ranch 30 years ago. And I was like, well, how come you never told me that? the whole time when I was hauling hay for you. And there would be no reason for this guy to make that story up. And with all the crazy stories that we talk about from portals to Duendes to Sasquatch, extraterrestrials, whatever, time slips, I can't tell you the amount of people that have emailed us and thanked us for bringing these stories to light because they thought that they had a weird, wild experience and they never told nobody because they thought they were the only one. And they were afraid that they were losing their minds. But through podcasts, like all of these all you guys shows as well is like, it makes people more comfortable and then it takes the pressure off them. They're like, man, maybe I'm not crazy. Turns out over a hundred people have seen this glimmer man. You know, I thought I was the only one. And so it's helped people out. You don't realize when you're joking around, jackassing around with your friend on a podcast that somebody, if you're actually helping them, like I was really depressed or whatever. And they'll, they'll write in like you guys literally changed the way I was thinking. You brought me out of the slump I was in. And I can't thank you enough. And I, you know, that kind of stuff, that never crosses my mind when we're in here just goofing off. But I think that the shared experience, I think everybody, no matter who you are, likes to sit around a campfire and hear crazy stories. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. And it's not my job to prove whether they're real or not. I don't think you ever will. Like we always joke about with Bigfoot. I hope it's not discovered because then th that ends all the fun. The fun is the mystery. Right. Yeah. It's like when they show the aliens and signs and they ruin the whole movie. <laughs> so I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna die on that hill. I'm gonna die on the hill. If they'd just not shown you the aliens and signs, it would have been so much scarier. I loved that movie. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> also, their one weakness is water, and they went to a planet with two thirds of water. I mean, come on, it's flawed from the beginning. Talk about higher intelligence, right? Yeah, <laughs> bunch of dummies flying around. Yeah, uh, yeah ours is ours is very similar to y'all's. Where we just started this podcast um, just for fun, because before this. Uh, we've been doing content or I've been doing content for Sunday cool um, seven years now, I think. Mm -hmm. And just doing like funny skit videos for like churches and youth groups and stuff like that. And then uh, when Andrew came on, was it two years now or three? Almost three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we would just start having the funnest conversations of like what we saw on the internet or TikTok or like whatever. And it's like, yeah, dude, we really need to start a podcast. And we didn't know what we were doing or which way it was going to go. Definitely didn't expect it to be where it is now. Um, but our prayer the whole time is just God use the podcast, however you want in the moment it becomes about us, just take it away. And he uses us dummies that talk about our favorite poop stories and peeing on our legs when we see a UFO and we get just so many emails and messages of people like, like if you, what you guys are doing is so rad and like, like I've opened up my Bible for the first time in 10 years or whatever, just because we talk about scripture a lot and like how it relates to everything. And we're very not educated in anything. Um, but everything, but, but everything. everything. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we just have fun with it. And I feel like now what the podcast has done, it's like, I feel like I've taken the red pill from the matrix. And I just see like everything like way differently now. Yeah. You know, like, but it's like, I mean, from a young age, I always knew that there was something more like in the spiritual realm and stuff, just because I've had encounters at a young age. But now with this journey we've been on with like listening to you guys and stuff, it's like, it's just clarifying everything. You know, it's like, like, oh yeah, I'm not crazy for experiencing this or thinking this. Like, Or just talking about it. I think that's yeah, one yeah. of the biggest thing is my confidence has changed uh, of like, okay, it's okay to talk about this. It's okay to question this. It's okay to make a joke out of this. Like, because um, at the beginning, I'm like, I don't know if people are going to really like it, just listening to us talking about whatever, because we're not experts in it. But I think that's the coolest thing is seeing a community build around what we're doing and like be all in and be super excited and see us as friends and say, you should talk about this next. And then yeah. we do. And then we, it just builds a community where it's like, listen, I'm not the only crazy person that's <laughs> talking about this. All right. We got tons of other people that, you know, are, you know, asking questions or looking into it. So it's just been a really cool thing just to see how um, our minds have just been a little more open, but also just more firm on 
every, whenever it leads back to spiritual stuff, it's always yeah. like, it's just cementing our faith even more. We're like, but golly, he's still in control and he's doing all these things. And yeah, we've definitely neat. found a genre of people that it's really cool of how our podcast works. It's like, we talk about, we can talk about like really deep, heavy stuff, but it's like all packaged within like a humor based thing. So it's like, we don't take ourselves that seriously, but like it definitely, I don't know, eases the tension of, I don't know. Oh, just the heavy topics. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it cuts it all off. It's fun how we're all evolving too. It's like, yeah. like, you know, you guys, it started with all jokes and now you're like buying in and now you're like educating your audience. I started out a complete skeptic. Like I never yeah. heard, studied anything about the book of Enoch when I went to Bible college and Josh starts talking about it. I'm like, okay, guy. <laughs> but you know, then you, start- well, you came from a good perspective too, because like not usually the perspective you would want, but like you didn't have no podcasting or like, See, listen, like, so it's like, yeah, yeah. so to all be on a different journey, different path and all of us like coming together and asking tough questions, it's just been yeah. super fun. And it's finding fun. the funny is yeah. the most, that's the most important thing for me. It's like, cause I know we all work better, especially me and Josh, like when we get in that goofy state, that's where we thrive. And yeah. so that the able that the fact that we're able to throw in all this heavy spiritual interdimensional stuff with, you know, red heifers and all that stuff. It's like it's just cool to be able to joke about it and be yeah. for another episode. Like, yeah. Do you know nine eleven was an inside job? <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I agree. I think that uh you you know, you you start these podcasts. I think for me it was it was a moment when we were in I was talking about my our story with going to Peru, but when we were standing at Saksai Wam and it's looking at these giant megalithic stones that are like, you know, perfectly smooth on eight sides, fit together like Legos, and you're standing at this wall that's towering over all, all of us. You're like, this is massive. Like, how did they move these stones? Some of these stones are are, are so huge. And I think it's one thing to talk about stories and it's another thing to stand there and stare at it and touch it and be like, how did they build this? You know? And uh, one of the things we've talked a lot about is the megaliths and sort of this ancient construction, this knowledge that they built these things all over the world. And then when you actually get to go to one, and it was kind of cool that our our fans rallied around us and Luke and I got to go to this place and basically hang out. We did a live podcast where we're walking around and being in downtown Cusco and, and touching these these like green stones that are just look like marshmallows fit together. And they're, they've been there for, you know, thousands of years. And you're like, this is... One of them was 12 sides and like, how did they do this? And it feels like, you know, when you, you grow up in the church and a lot of us have, you hear these stories of giants, David and Goliath, and you don't really understand. That's like a little snapshot of like a whole narrative that has sort of been brushed over. Like there were giants and they were killing them and they were exterminating them. And then you, you, you see things that maybe they built. And then you start to reverse engineering that like, okay, these, these stones look like they were lifted in or, or, levitated in the place shaped in the air or whatever they were heated up or they were however they did it there was some advanced knowledge and i think then you have to sort of reverse it like at some point you know the whole giant narrative for me has changed that that there were angels are probably a like a physical being not a spiritual being an actual physical being they just not here and i think that I've changed my perspective because you grew up in the church. Everything that you don't understand is just, it's just mystical. It just floats around. There's no like, but it's like, no, they're, they birthed, they got, they hooked up with women and they birthed these giants that, that, and there's remnants all over the world. And I think the physical aspect of these things that you read about in ancient history and all the mythologies around the world and every single culture's, you know, their story, they all kind of tell the same story. They talk about a flood. They talk about giants. They talk about these weird things. And, and, you know, growing up in the church, it was like, okay, so maybe angels aren't spiritual beings. Maybe they're like upgraded humans and they came down here and messed with everything. You know, like, why is, why do we overcomplicate things? Like, so I think that's the mind shift that I had. Cause I never really understood what is an angel. You hear all stories of angel people. I was driving my car and all of a sudden this angel saved me. I got in this car wreck or I showed up and you know how people have these, these encounters with angels and you hear about them all the time. And you're like, what are they? You know, yeah, they made a movie about that. They played baseball. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many eyes did they have? Open, shut. 
Yeah, they, they only played outfield though. They they weren't infielders. They weren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like putting a like a sort of a, you know, Angel could roll into town today, hang out, have dinner with them, and ask some questions, and then he could leave. And they're like, well, people say all the time, like, oh, well, Angels can take on the form of anything, and I'm like, I don't think so. So that's why I'm where my mind has changed. I think their 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 resting state is something that's like a human, and. It's not just spirit. So when you say spirit, spirit. So you mean it's just not a yeah. spirit, not just a There are spirit. spirits, right. but I think that there are. Just to clarify, because spiritual gets a little muddy. Yeah, they live in, they live in another dimension. Another dimension. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, this is kind of a taste. I, that I, I just want to say thanks to all you guys for wanting to do this, this Squatchella Festival. If you want to, I guess we can all pitch this event right now. Like this is happening in, uh, at Belmont University at their Fisher Center, which is like an $85 million building. It's, it's awesome. I think, you're short, I think you're short like $100 million on that. I think it's a $185 million building. I heard yeah, it was, I heard it was paid, $85 billion. We're getting paid $85 was, million. Dollars. I don't think it's yeah, $185 billion. Million. With a B. Uh, 0. 0.5 trillion. It's but rupees. anyway, it's, 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 it's too well. It's inflation. It's now trillions. That's right. <laughs> It's a trillion dollar building and uh, <laughs> come on down. No, but we're, uh, we're going to do this live on stage. Everyone's going to have sort of a topic and we're going to, we're going to just, just like your typical music festival. We're going to shotgun blast you back to back to back to back to back all day long with, uh, you know, all the weirdness and it's called Squatchella. You can get tickets now at Squatchella.com and uh Yeah. We're really pumped that uh, all you guys are, we all do something different. We all have a different vibe and it's cool to see, you know, some sort of weird idea kind of come to reality and here we are. So I don't know if you guys, um, I don't know if you guys want to tease anything else, but. Uh, no, it's going to be rad. It's going to be so fun. I'm stoked. stoked. Yeah. It's better than a song. Andy's going to do the whole show without a shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> that's like, yeah. You got a Squatchella um, banana hammock that's pre ordered right now. Yeah. yeah. And the tickets just sold out. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and they're gone. Like cheering the most because, <laughs> you know, they have some intimate camping situations that, that between the two of them. Weird. But uh, we are, we also have a VIP ticket. We can talk about that. There are, there's a limited amount of VIP tickets. We're going to have a little, a section there where you can come backstage, hang out with us. We're going to do QA, take pictures. You can get some signed posters and it's going to be a good time. So, um, yeah. And the VIP includes Andy washing every single person's foot. Yes. Sponge baths. Yeah. Yeah. And I will come to you. Those feet. I will go to your (laughs) residence. Yes. So it'll be a long night, but I'll be there. Just wake up. Your feet's just being wet. What the world? (laughs) What's it? Go to sleep. Just Just like Jake's you, man. Wash, wash and feet. Yeah. 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 Pay no attention. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, you August third, right? Yeah, thank you, Tom. August third. Yes, August mark 3rd. it on your calendars. August, yes, August third, Nashville, Tennessee. I'll make sure I'm there. Come, yeah. Make sure you guys are all there in in, in this in this virtual room. But uh, join us. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna it's it's gonna be like a music festival, but with podcasts. You get to see your favorite podcast live, um, do their thing, and maybe you'll see Andy's feet. Yeah, we can't we can't say that's for sure, but that may be the special guest at the bottom. No, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. Perfect. It'll be very, very aware, mm-hmm. very apparent. Actually, probably the first thing you smell or hear, <laughs> see when you walk in. No, it's amazing. Like Luke and I went to a movie premiere the other the other day, and it's an amazing building, awesome facility, theater style. Everything's uh, just incredible. It's funny that the the juxtaposition of a bunch of dudes talking about Sasquatch in this building will be hilarious on its own. <laughs> And uh, it's like one of the nicest buildings in Tennessee. Can't believe we get to have this event. We're degrading it. (laughs) Yeah, we are degrading it. (laughs) And they're letting all of us into it. I've heard they're giving us honorary PhDs too. Belmont is. (laughs) That's pretty great. (laughs) In Sasquology. Come on down. There's going to be there's going to be a VIP hanging out. There's going to be merch booths, photos. Tony's bringing a portal potty. We got a huge electronic wall. There's going to be videos. There's going to be just an amazing staff and the fire fire will be fire dragon won't tell you when <laughs> these guys are bringing live gators that's right it's gonna happen board crocs squatchella dot perhaps get yeah and get your tickets now because they're gonna go quick absolutely they will awesome all right thanks boys bye thanks guys it'll be Thank fun to do in person thanks, guys. yeah y'all the best